Hello everyone, my name is Fiona Steele Anthony and I'm back in our beautiful Hamburg studios after an exciting fortnight at the Olympiad uh, in Baku. So it's been a week now since the tournament uh, completed and I'm aware I won't tell you anything new if I tell you the US won the tournament in the open section and China in the women's. Uh, but instead I thought I would uh, write a little article where I look back uh, at the Olympiad and try and give you a feel of what it's like to experience um, such an event on site and try to have a look at behind what's going, uh, at what's going on behind the scenes. So I decided to take a slightly new approach and mix a written article with a video. And in this video, I uh, will mostly be showing you uh, tweets from players at the Olympiad, as well as add my two cents uh, to some hot topics from Baku. So uh, let's get to it straight away and let's start with the tournament winners. Uh, so ladies first and let's start with world champion uh, Hu Yi Fan who tweeted Baku Chess Olympiad finished with great success. Uh, looking forward for the trading competition with Trade Immo. So this is a competition if you haven't heard of it. I know we talked about it quite a lot here uh, during the broadcast of the tournament. I think it's still time for you to enter. So if you're interested, uh, just head to her Twitter page and you'll find all the info there. Uh, Hu Yi Fan, her team was the top seed. I was lucky enough uh, to face the Team China on the top board in round one, which was a great pleasure. It was a tough game, but an interesting experience. Uh, she was the first to admit they didn't have the best um, of tournaments, but it was still enough uh, to win what was her first Olympic gold. Then in the men's section, uh, a lot has been said and written about the tournament. It took some time to figure out who had actually won gold, but in the end it was Team USA and we see Fabiano tweeting at champions of the world, hashtag Team USA, hashtag Baku Chess Olympiad, hashtag Chess. So Fabiano, not only is he the US champion, he was also the team leader, he was on top gold. Uh, he did very well and there we see the five players as well as um, the team captain, the third from the right, John Donaldson, and on the far right, uh, Grandmaster Alex Landerman, who helped the team with their preparation. So congratulations to China and USA. Another American player who was fairly active on uh, Twitter during the tournament was Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, for example, he treated those two photos. Uh, the first one on 6 September, uh, from the infamous Bermuda party. Uh, he was one of the top players to attend. Um, Fabiano was there, world champion Magnus Carlsen was there. I have posted a photo of that in my article. So uh, I wish I could tell you more about the Bermuda party, but there is this unspoken rule that what happens at the Bermuda party stays at the Bermuda party. So no gossip from me. Then another treat from Hikaru on September 8th. Uh, the chess atmosphere in Baku has been great, but the food is even better. Um, there's been mixed reviews uh, on this. I heard from people who were not very satisfied um, with the food in their hotel, but I have to say that personally, uh, it was some of the best food I've eaten at any Olympiad, so no complaints from me, and I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not that easy to please. Moving on, uh, so I was talking about uh, Team USA and how it wasn't um, clear whether they'd won. It took some time figuring it out, but you will know all about this by now. And for example, so all those tweets from Hikaru uh, all came from the day of the last round. So Hikaru started by saying, other than a complete loss of, of objectivity and madness in round 10, pretty much a perfect Olympiad for the US. In round 10, uh, Hikaru lost to the Georgian Grandmaster with the unpronounceable name. Then uh, shortly afterwards, Hikaru tweeted Matthias Blubaum uh, with the win of the tournament. Thanks for the help, Germany. Uh, indeed, it's unbelievable. And I have added, uh, I've written about that in my article. Um, something needs to be done about the tiebreak rules. It's just um, too hard to explain to anyone from the broad public and even for chess players. I don't think it should be the case that um, 
a game from somewhere down the tournament decides uh, the tournament winners. And then finally Hikaru treated gold. We all had our ups and downs, but it's a team event and everyone won games in critical moments. Hashtag USA. So once again, uh, congrats to Team USA. I think uh, they did great and it was a very deserved gold medal. So talking of those tiebreak rules, which need uh, some looking over, I would say, uh, something else which was uh, talked about a lot were the security measures at the Baku Olympiad. I've written rather more than I was planning to about this um, in my article, so I'll have uh, I'll let you have a look at what I've written. I think I won't go into it much more in the video, but you can, for example, head to Ian Rogers' uh, Twitter page if you want to know more about what happened there. I, I won't read out all his tweets, uh, you will have had enough time to do that by yourself now. But um, yeah, there were some issues at times and I think what made it all the more problematic was the fact that a lot of the security um, personnel uh, didn't speak English. So if you were unlucky enough to have forgotten your player card, for example, or your badge, on the table, they would sometimes even make it hard for you to get back to your board and communication wasn't easy. Um, so yeah, some some issues uh, with the security measures, some which I thought were very excessive, but more about that in my article. Moving on, who's next? Uh, oh, next is a tweet. Um, one of my favorite Twitterers out there, uh, Anton Square and me, make sure to give him a follow if you like uh, funny photoshops uh, of chess players or yeah, anything chess related really. This one is, uh, they said no cell phones, but nothing about landlines. Uh, it was a tweet that really made me laugh and Hikaru was one of the players uh, who re retweeted this. So yeah, just a, a funny tweet from the Olympiad. Dan told me he'd even had messages asking him if this was a genuine picture, but I can reassure you it wasn't. Uh, Sergei didn't make any phone calls during his game. But yeah, make sure to give uh, Dan a follow if you would like a good laugh about chess related stuff. And then uh, a player who is always very active uh, on Twitter during his tournaments is Anish Giri. Anish Giri, who before the Olympiad hadn't uh, won a game in a long, long time. I can't recall exactly when, but I think since the Shamkir Memorial. So on September 2, uh, September 2nd, the day of the first round, he won and he treated finally one in a row. Hashtag one, hashtag ecstatic. Go team uh, Netherlands at Baku Chess. Uh, Anish actually had a very good start to the tournament. He won his first three games, um, but then it was back to his old um, ways. Uh, to his credit, he played all 11 games. He drew the last eight, but still um, a plus three score, of course, isn't bad. Uh, unfortunately, though, as his next uh, tweet points out, the Dutch train uh, went off the rails after the rest day. Some missed opportunities on my part felt hammered towards the end. Uh, it's true, of course, the Olympiad, although it's now a lot shorter. When I first played uh, the Olympiad back in 2002, it was 14 rounds. Nowadays, uh, it's only 11, but it's still it's an exhausting um, event. And what I very much regret is that uh, this year they cut the second rest day. So there is now only one rest day, which makes the tournament all the more tiring, of course. And I hope that FIDE uh, will consider giving us a second rest day back before the next Olympiad. So next on, who's next on? Next on is one of the stars uh, of this Olympiad, my namesake uh, Fiona Mutesi from uh, Uganda. She tweeted on September 5th, despite challenges for my team to travel to Azerbaijan for the World Chess Olympiad, we finally made it and managed to join from round four. I believe there were some visa issues, which uh, meant some team arrived in Baku uh, with a lot of, I mean, around the, arriving for round four is quite a serious delay. So that meant that uh, Fiona unfortunately could only play two games. She explained, planned for five rounds at the Olympiad, but late start caused me play only two. Sad that I'm leaving my team. Uh, good that it's for movie premiere. Um, and there you go. As you can see in the next tweet, 
Uh, Fiona Mutesi is now uh, heading towards world fame. Uh, a Disney movie has been made about her, about her story. It's called Queen of Cafe, and it's out in cinemas at the end of the month. I think in a text coming out in the US in a week, I believe. I'm very much looking forward to it, and I recommend everyone interested in chess uh, goes and see it. This tweet is by Oscar-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o, uh, tweeting a Fiona sandwich, the real Fiona on the left, and Medina Nalvanga on the right, Medina Nalvanga, who played Fiona in the movie, and um, Lupita Nyong'o played her mother. So a movie I'm very much looking forward to. Then a player who, as everyone knows, a very outspoken player and Twitterer, Nigel Short, um, I've inserted a couple of his tweets into my article as well um, about anti-cheating measures. I think you all are aware in, uh, of Nigel's implications in that now. Uh, but here he tweets uh, on the day September 3rd, so this was shortly after arrival. Despite a couple of irritations, notably visas, which they received very shortly before the tournament started, I believe, this is likely to be one of the best Olympiads I have played in. I wonder how Nigel feels about that um, after what happened uh, in the aftermath to that tweet. But still, this really was an, organi an Olympiad organized on the highest levels, and I can only agree with him. And then on September 13th, after the last round, Nigel showed a disappointment not to have edged Peru in the final round, but still an Olympiad with real highlights for England, beating China and Azerbaijan. Indeed, it's good to see England back um, on the highest stage. They've had a rough couple of years where they were not able to play on the top top boards, but here they were in contention for the top places, even possibly a medal up until the very end. So kudos to England and I'm hoping uh, they continue on their good run. And then finally, this couldn't be a complete video, of course, without the intervention of world champion Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Magnus Carlsen team did extremely well. A wonderful fifth place for our young team at the Chess Olympiad. So proud of my teammates. Uh, it was also a, a good event for Magnus Carlsen, who's been known to struggle when he was representing Norway at team events before. Uh, fifth place is indeed historic, but Magnus wouldn't be Magnus if he didn't follow up his tweet with a little stab at the, uh, the winners from America. Uh, Magnus continued saying, probably need an even better squad to go uh, further though. Wonder if Karana and So are still for sale. Uh, this was a tweet which I have to say um, made me smirk, but um, I saw he got quite a lot of stick for it on Twitter. But I think people need to realize that uh, this was written tongue in cheek. I'm pretty sure of that. And uh, Magnus has been known to uh, tweet things like that before. There was a famous moment, of course, when uh, this was talked about on US TV with someone saying the US were buying nerds and Magnus had tweeted about that at the time too. So I believe this is a tongue in cheek. A tweet from Magnus. And then talking of the Norwegian success, uh, Olympia Urkan, who is another uh, person well worth following on Twitter with a lot of interesting chess tweets, he uh, said Norway's fifth place is a spectacular result throughout 35 Olympiad appearances. The closest they came to the top 10 was back in 1976 when they finished 11. However, one of the members of Team Norway who didn't have the best of times was uh, their second board, John Ludwig Hammer, who uh, halfway through the tournament on September 9th uh, tweeted, if I end up with 11 drawers, I'm dyeing my hair blonde. Um, it wasn't just that he finished with 11 draws, it even ended worse for John Ludwig. Uh, he ended with nine draws and two losses, but true to his word, because um, I guess that meant no wins for him. Before the closing ceremony, uh, John Ludwig, joined by his entire team, made a little trip to the hairdressers in Baku, and there we see him getting his hair dyed. 
Uh, those photos are courtesy of uh, Olga Dolzikova from uh, Norway and you can find those photos on the Facebook page of uh, Stormester. So yeah, there we see John Ludwig and if you want to see the result, well here it is. <laughs> Again, those photos are courtesy of Olga. We see a happy Magnus Carlsen there snapping a selfie. And yeah, let me know your thoughts. What about the blonde John Ludwig Hammer? And finally, finally, I will conclude um, this video with a treat from my good friend and colleague Anna Rudolph. Anna Rudolph was also present at the Olympiad, not as a player, but as a roving reporter for the official organizers for ChessCast. She tweeted last day at the Baku Chess Olympiad. It's been a spectacular event. Can't wait for the next one. Uh, so if you haven't seen Anna's work, uh, she produced and um, interviewed people for a lot of very, very interesting videos. And you can find all of those on the official uh, YouTube page of JustCast. So kudos to Anna, who did a great job at this Olympiad. So I believe this is it uh, from my part. I hope that I managed to bring this Olympiad a little bit closer to you. And um, I look forward as ever to your feedback and your comments uh, at, in the comment section to this article. Thank you for watching and see you soon.